Welcome to a lesson on evaluating polynomials by using the remainder theorem. And the remainder theorem says if a polynomial p of x of degree at least 1 is divided by q of x, where q of x is a factor, then the remainder is 0. So that's what we know. If I divide a polynomial by another polynomial and I get a remainder of 0, it tells me my divisor is a factor. This theorem also provides a nice, fast way of evaluating complex polynomials quickly and for determining if a given polynomial is a factor of the polynomial. And so the big idea of the remainder theorem, one of the big ideas is right here in this box, that the remainder of the function has the same value as evaluating the function. And so we want to put this into practice, okay? And I have a polynomial function here for you, f of x, and it is a cubic, it's of degree 3. It has four terms, 3x cubed plus 8x squared plus 5x minus 7. And I want to know if negative 2 is a zero of the function. And because of the wording of the theorem and because of this phrase that I see f of negative 2, um, there's a couple of thoughts that I'm having. One thought is, well, back in Algebra 1, I knew how to evaluate a function. I knew that if I'm supposed to find f of negative 2, I can just substitute negative 2 in place of my x in my given expression, right? So that's what I've done here. I put negative 2 in place of x. And then on the next line, I evaluated that without a calculator. Um, and then on the next line, I kept going. And then I combined my negative numbers and my, and then I ended up with f of 2 equals negative 9. So I actually answered the question at first without using any synthetic division. And I also wanted to think about what does f of negative 2 equals negative 9 really mean? It means that the function passes through the point negative 2, negative 9. So then I thought about this prompt, determine if negative 2 is a 0. Well, for something to be a 0 of a polynomial function, that means it has to pass through the x-axis at that point, right? So I started thinking about the end behavior, because you and I have some knowledge about end behavior. And we know that this is an odd degree function. It has a positive leading coefficient, so the right end goes up. We know the left end then goes down, because these ends don't match, right, when it's odd. And so at most, this thing could pass through the x-axis, what, three times, right? There could be, could be three real zeros at most. But for the function to pass through negative 2 on the x-axis, it couldn't also pass through negative 9. It wouldn't be a function, right? So my answer to the prompt is no. Negative 2 is not a 0 of the function. And again, I can answer that before knowing anything about synthetic division or before applying synthetic. But now I want to apply synthetic division and see what all of this up here is saying. So I write my coefficients, and the order of the function is already descending order. I put negative 2 out here, and I go through my process of synthetic division, my process being bringing down the first number. Negative 3 times, or sorry, 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And then remember, I add these together. 8 plus negative 6 is 2. And then it starts all over again. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Then I add. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, and I add. This is my remainder. And it says right here, the remainder of the function, this negative 2, has the same value as evaluating the function at negative 2. So that's another reason why f of negative 2 equals negative 9. Then I went one step further, and I typed it into Desmos just to see to double check that the function definitely passes through negative 2, negative 9. So I typed it into Desmos. I said, what is f of negative 2? Desmos spits out the answer of negative 9, which means this function must pass through negative 2, negative 9, and it does. So that is super nice right there. 
All right, now what I want to do is go on to the next example. And this time, instead of evaluating the function the old-fashioned way, I want to just use synthetic division. So let's do that together. It says evaluate f of negative 2 using the remainder theorem. All right, so let's grab a text box, and let's go ahead and write all of these coefficients down. They're already in descending order. And don't forget the zero constant. I need that. So I'm going to put 3 negative 18, 20, negative 24, and zero, because my constant term is zero. I'm, I want to see if negative one is a zero, so I'm going to put negative one outside here. And with my shapes tool, I'll grab a line, and I am going to know that this is what I'm dividing by, and this is what I'm bringing down. All right, so let's go ahead and do our synthetic division. 3 comes down, and I'm going to stretch out my text box. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Stretch out that text box. Now let's add. Ready? Uh, negative 18 plus negative 3 is negative 21. Now let's multiply together. And negative 21 times negative 1 is 21. And then we, the numbers that are lined up, we add. That's 41. And then I multiply, and I get negative 41. And then I add. And this, all of a sudden, these numbers are getting bigger. Um, negative 24 and negative 21 is negative 65. Ooh. And negative 65 times negative 1 is 65. Oh, boy. So that's a high y value, isn't it? That's going to be my remainder. So once again, I'm going to grab my rectangle just to just point out oops point out that this is definitely <clears throat> my remainder so because that's my remainder i now know that f of negative 1 according to the remainder theorem the value it says the remainder of the function when dividing by negative 1 is the value of the function at that point so i believe if i were to type this thing into desmos right i believe that um f of negative 1 would be 65. So I'm just going to go ahead and check it. All right, so I'm going to undo all this, kind of hide those things. I'll put my new function in here. I'll change these so that they are now exponents. And what was it? f of negative 1, I believe. Let me double check. Yeah, f of negative 1. Our claim is that it's 65. So f of negative 1. And, oh, it's telling me that I've already defined f, so I might as well, let me just give it a different name, g. All right, 65, just like what we said. All right, good. So then the question says, does it go, is negative 1 a 0? Well, no, negative 1 isn't a 0, because here's negative 1. It doesn't go through negative 1 comma 0, so I have to answer that question also. We have to say, I'll use my text box, that negative 1 is not a zero of f of x. Had I gotten a remainder of zero, then this negative one would have been a zero of the function. All right, starting to feel like you're getting a handle on the remainder theorem. What we want you to do is we want you to try numbers six and seven, and then you can come back and check. So I'm just going to go over number 7 with you right here. And I have 5, 12, 1, negative 9. And I'm dividing by negative 2 because I want to find p of negative 2, right? So using my line tool, let's go ahead and make sure that we have a division problem that's going to work. Pull all this up. And then my text tool again. All right. So bringing down my 5, I have 5 here. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Remember, I add those together, and I get 2. I multiply 2 times negative 2 to get negative 4. I add these together, and I get negative 3. I multiply negative 3 times negative 2 to get um, 6. 
and then I add nine, negative 9 plus 6 to get negative 3. So what does that mean? That means that I have a remainder other than 0. My remainder is negative 3. Okay, so what does that mean in the context of this situation? Uh, that means that the value of the function p at x equals negative 2 is negative 3. Therefore, the function passes through negative 2 comma negative 3. So negative 2 is not a 0 of p of x. Hopefully your answer matched with mine.